Hi, I'm Greg Bryant. You know, when we use the phrase lifelong civil servant, that has kind of a negative connotation to it. Someone who has no real joy or color to their life, just a form stamper. Fortunately, today we're in conversation with the very colorful commissioner from Dunedin, Maureen Mo Freeney. This is Coffee with the Commission. Commissioner Freeney, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, good to be here. Let's uh, start off with how you first came to the city of Dunedin. Okay, well, um, I actually came here in the mid to late 80s. I came from, uh, I just had gotten my master's in business administration from Kent State University and uh, didn't really see a lot of job prospects in what I wanted to do in uh, Kent, Ohio and in Akron, Ohio. So I'd had some friends that had moved down here and I just decided, why not? So uh, I came down and I had a broken down car and uh, I uh, immediately was looking for work and, and ironically I actually almost accepted another job and then decided I didn't want it but then there was somebody that used to work for Dunedin. So I literally like uh, decided maybe I'll try that out. So I did and I got hired as a management analyst for Dunedin. And I mean had you th thought of a, you know, a career in in uh, civil service? I actually had started out my uh, career. I, I had gotten my undergrad degree in law enforcement administration from Kent State. I had started my career working in juvenile court, working for kids and families, which was really what I had planned to do. Um, I had never ever, you know, intended to be a police officer, all due respect to police officers, but I wanted to be on the correction side of things. So I'd started out with that. I'd worked for a juvenile court for several years, then I worked for a federal program in Ohio um, for a couple years. Um, the federal funding was taken away. It was a restitution program for kids, so kids who had broken the law and needed to pay money back, they, they kind of earned that back, that payback. And uh, at the same time, we would work with them to make sure it didn't happen again. So that was defunded. Um, I literally uh, borrowed like $10,000 when I didn't have a job to go back and get my master's in business administration. Um, and, and so really my goal when I came here, I had no idea I'd end up in public sector, to be honest with you. I figured I would probably make a move to business. And, uh, and then I really looked at everything and it was ironic that probably one of the only entry level jobs that made sense for me in a public entity like Dunedin was the management analyst. So it uh, worked out and obviously it worked out. And you spent uh, how many years with the city as, a, as an employee? I worked 22 years uh, as, a, as an employee for Dunedin. So I um, started out as management analyst, which pretty much was a great place to start because it dealt with the budget. It dealt with um, a lot of the inner workings of all the departments in the city. Uh, and of course, I got to know everybody that way, uh, built relationships within the city. I got promoted to risk manager. I got promoted to human resources director. Then I got promoted to director of administration. Then I got director of assistant city manager. Then I was interim city manager. And then I left here and went to the county. So um, it's uh, it was a great it was a great decision to be here, though. I mean, uh, it's been a, a wonderful journey in Dunedin. And then after all those years of public service, you retired, and then yet still decided to run for commissioner. What was your motivation at that point? So I always say I'm not retired. I'm doing consulting. Yeah. I'm doing consulting business. But I did get my 30 years in with the uh, Florida Retirement System, so I was able at any age to step down and uh, be able to uh, take advantage of that and also do a side job. And um, but uh, I got a call from somebody who said there's going to be an open seat. You should think about it. And uh, and it was something over the years that I thought about. I mean, and people would ask me like, well, do you want to run for anything else, or is it just the need? And I said, uh, it's just the need. I mean, I love the need, and so my heart is here, and so my passion is here, and so um, I decided that I would do it. And uh, I will say, I. Having worked around elected officials my whole career, I had no idea how the election process is. It's uh, it's challenging, and it's there's parts of it you just can't. It it just makes you crazy, but there's other parts like walking homes and talking to the citizens. It's awesome, just awesome. And then what surprised you at first when you became commissioner? I mean, obviously, all those years you'd kind of seen the other side of the coin. Was there were there any surprises per se? You know, people have really asked me that, and I, um, I can't 
there weren't a lot of surprises. I mean, I knew that it's a lot of work. Um, you make some decisions that are really tough. You cannot possibly go into it thinking you're going to make everyone happy. So you just try to um, do what you think is right for the city and try to think of the big picture. So um, I can't say that there were. What's interesting though, and I, sometimes I say I'm going to write a book about this, is the, the difference that you feel between being a staff person, bringing recommendations to the commission, and a commissioner who's making the decision, one of the commissioners is making the decision. And I was thinking about it yesterday, thinking about you know our coffee talk here, and I was thinking, like I think as a staff person, you do everything, you, you study an issue, you do all the research, you do everything you can to bring the best business decision to the commission. And, but now that I sit on the side of the commission, and I think as a staffer you also think, okay, like we've done all the work for you, what's the problem? Just make the decision, okay? And, but now um, when you're on the other side of the coin, you usually get that, and of course under the Sunshine Laws, you have not had any opportunity to talk to any of your colleagues about this big issue on the table. And so you're up there and to think that you're just gonna make a quick decision no matter how much work staff's done, is not realistic because you have a, such a obligation to your colleagues, but number one, to the citizens, to kind of think about all the issues, and you have an obligation to listen to your constituents. I mean, you know, staff listens to constituents. I don't want to ever say that they don't. They, they do. But of course, one of the things that happens in an election you really broaden your horizon of the people that you've, you've reached out to, or you should. And so you hear a lot about what people feel. So it's different. And so when you're up there and you're making a decision and you haven't talked to your colleagues for the first time, you know, sometimes it goes in a winding path. And sometimes we didn't understand that as staffers. We'd be like, okay, why is this a winding path? We did all the work for you. But the reality is there's a lot of work to make sure you are looking and talking to your colleagues and respecting the fact that they represent different levels of individuals that they connect with and talk with and um, yeah so it's different it's, it's very different with all your years working for the city now being commissioner you're obviously well known in the community as a city celebrity what is there a, a there is there a you know a, a favorite moment of yours that you know because of your celebrity status well, first of all, I don't like to say I'm a celebrity because that it's a, you, know, I, you think of yourself as a servant to the people, so to speak, and and I say that with all due respect because it's a very humbling thing when you get elected, um, and it's it's very exciting, but it's very humbling, and so I always feel that um, that weight of that. Um, but it's funny when you ask that about special moments with constituents. I mean. There's just so many, but some of them, my, my favorite that I could talk all day about is ones that you get when you're walking houses running for election. And you just meet so, it's actually people will say, oh, is that really hard? Is it, it's, I mean, it's a lot of work. I mean, in, in the heat of Florida, it's a lot of work, but it is really rewarding. I had this uh, older lady, I went to her home, very accomplished woman, widow, just lost her dog. I went to her house. And she had a lot of thoughts about, she stayed up on the city issues, so she shared a lot of that stuff with me. But um, it was interesting because you just realize how many people in different ways, in her way, she was somewhat isolated now, but she watched Dunedin 15, she paid attention. She'd had a whole history with Dunedin before she was retired and widowed and now much, much older. Um, and um, she wanted to share it and it was, it was great. And I actually went back like two weeks later because I had showed her pictures of my dog and, um, and she was so miss missing the love of a dog. So I went back two weeks later to take my little dog and she just loved it. And um, I, mean, I don't know, you just have a lot of heartwarming things that you, you get to know people. I guess that's what, what it is. You really get to know your constituents and where they're coming from. So. That much commitment to government, is there a particular uh, hobby or anything like that that you enjoy away from City Hall? Uh, well, I'm, I'm a huge walker. I love to walk, so I like to walk on the trail. I like to, like to walk in my neighborhood. I have multiple walking groups. One walking group that actually, like, we walk the whole um, length of the linear, John uh, Hubbard Linear Park, 
and then um, after that we go back and have a beer at Rosie's. So you know, it's not all you know, it's not all about the fitness. But um, so I love to do that and uh, and fitness in general. Um, but in thinking about it, I guess for me the the thing I enjoy most is I call it the bubble of Dunedin. You know, uh, it's not hard to think about something to do in Dunedin. So whether it's your restaurants, your breweries, your coffee shops, um, the special events, uh, it's, you know, it, it, so I, I, just, I just love enjoying that. And we just bought a golf cart, so that should tell you that's another level of fun. And, uh, and Dunedin knows how to have fun, so you don't have to worry about something to do in Dunedin. So. The next 10 years in the city of Dunedin, what do you, what do you see as the main concerns, as the main focus for the, that the, uh, the commission should have? Um, well, we just did a, a citizen survey, and, um, and so um, what's kind of been nice for me is I have a lot of history, which is really important, but again, it's really important to understand what's happening today and what people are thinking and what they feel are some of the issues of the day. And um, so what the survey told us, truly not surprising, I think that, first of all, something that's been true for 30 years is that people do not want uh, the charm of Dunedin messed up. So I always say, as commissioners, the biggest mistake we can make is to screw up the charm of Dunedin. Uh, really important, and there's a lot of passion in our citizens to make sure of that. And, um, and they tell us it all the time. Um, and, and I love that they tell us, but I also say to them, and say to you, this coffee, like, I feel that. I don't want to mess up the charm of Dunedin. I've seen Dunedin 35 years ago when there was nothing going on downtown and it was dust balls and it was vacancies and it was where living room is, it was the auto parts store and where smokehouse is, it was the, the tow yard and their broken down cars. And I and incrementally watched it change, incrementally saw the special events pop up. And one thing that's always been true with Dunedin, it's just got a spirit. and. And incrementally, it just seems to just get better and better and better. And so it's a really big responsibility that I know myself and all my colleagues on the commission feel the weight of, that we want to make sure we keep the good stuff going. Having, again, seen both sides, um, what's the, the best thing about being on the commission side? Um, you know, I have to tell you that um, I love, I love this job. This is like, I mean, I always say to people, I mean, I say this with humbleness that for 31 years, I feel like I had a great career and I achieved a lot and I'm very proud of it. And I loved it, but it still was work. This is a lot of work as a commissioner, but it doesn't feel like work. It just feels like a labor of love. Um, when I, um, when I go after and research an issue that we're going to talk about in a weird kind of way, it's fun. And, and even if it's controversial, it's just, you're just trying to do the best thing for the citizens. So, but to be a commissioner for a community that's this amazing and to have been part of it, even as a staffer, is an honor and a privilege. And I love it. I, and I think the best part I love every day is because I continue to expand a breadth of relationships in this community and whether it's like Chamber of Commerce or Downtown Merchants, just the citizens who are involved in our 37 some committee boards and committees and just the everyday citizen that just loves being involved. I, um, I mean, I love it. I love it. It's, 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 it's an honor and a privilege and I love it. Commissioner, thanks for talking with us today. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching this episode of Coffee with the Commission. A special thank you to Dunedin Coffee Company and Bakery, a great local cafe located at 730 Broadway downtown. This is a Dunedin Television production.